Greetings and welcome back. This is your boy Kamal once again and today we're going to do some math for fun. What kind of math are we talking about? Well, we have this really interesting integral equation where we're searching for a function f such that f here equals the integral of f plus the double integral of f plus the triple integral of f and so on and so forth where each integration is of course being carried out with respect to x. So we have this infinite order integral equation which does seem pretty interesting, but how are we to approach this? Well, I'm going to present a couple of solution developments. One is extremely straightforward and the other is extremely cool. And we're going to analyze the results of our solutions as well. Keeping with the tradition of the channel, I'm going to present the extremely cool solution first. So here it goes and it's based on some functional analysis. Now the integral operator is a linear transform. What that means is that if you take the integral of some alpha times a function f plus some beta times a function g where alpha and beta are constants, then we have alpha times the integral terribly, sorry about that, the integral of f plus beta times the integral of g. So it acts linearly on its arguments. Those who have a background in linear algebra are familiar with this. Okay, cool. So this applies not only to the integral operator, but to the multiple integral operators involved as well. So what we're going to do here is define the right hand side in terms of the integral operator plus the double integral operator plus the triple integral operator and so on and so forth acting on the function f. And what's cool here is that this thing looks like a geometric series, which may sound crazy, but it's actually a lot more common than you think and you'll encounter stuff like this in functional analysis and even some quantum mechanics where if you have this linear transform then you can define functions of it for example the exponential of a linear transform would be defined as terribly sorry about that the sum over n from 0 to infinity of t to the n divided by n factorial where t to the n means that we're applying the transform n number of times an example of this on which I actually have a video is the exponential derivative. So calling the d by dx operator here as d and the nth order derivative as d to the n, we define this thing as the sum over n from 0 to infinity of d to the n, that is the nth order derivative, divided by n factorial. So in line with this approach, we have this geometric series of integral operators which evaluates out to the first term being the integral operator divided by 1 minus the so-called common ratio which is of course the integral operator and this thing is acting on the function f and on the left hand side we have the function f again. Now this thing looks even more exotic than the equation we started off with but given the territories we've crossed into we can work with this. So we'll expand using 1 minus the integral operator where 1 here is the identity operator. So we have 1 minus the integral of f equal to the integral of f, which implies that f minus the integral of f equals the integral of f. This further implies that twice the integral of f equals f, which means that we have this really cute looking integral equation that is the integral of f equal to one half of f which is of course solved by an exponential function specifically it's solved by f equal to some constant c times e to the two times x we see this because if we integrate f here which results in c times the integral of e to the two x so this gives us c times e to the two x over two which is indeed one half the function f itself but is there another way to conclude this exact same solution? Well, there is. Let me just copy this down. So copy and paste. Let's break this equation down. So we'll write this as f equal to the integral of f plus the integral of the integral of f plus the double integral of f and so on and so forth. But wait a minute, isn't this thing exactly what the function f is defined to be? So we do indeed have f equal to the integral of f plus the integral of f, which implies that the integral of f 
equals one half of f, which of course does indeed lead to the solution that f equals c times e to the two x. But it remains to confirm that this is indeed a function that satisfies our integral equation. What I'm trying to say is, if we plug in f into our equation, does the right hand side indeed converge to f itself? So we're going to perform a bit of a check here. Terribly sorry about that. So we have integral of f plus double integral of f plus so on and so forth equal to integrating once gives us c times e to the 2x over 2. Integrating twice gives us c times 2 e to the 2x over 4 plus so on and so forth. So that means we can factor out c times e to the 2x and we have 1 half plus a quarter plus 1 eighth etc etc. And this thing is another geometric series. So we have c times e to the 2x times one half divided by one minus the common ratio, which is one half. So we have one half over one half, which cancels out to one. And we do indeed have c times e to the two x, which is the function f. So yes, indeed, this is a valid solution to our integral equation. Now the bonus round is actually the differential equation analog of our integral equation. So this time we're looking for f such that f equals f prime plus f double prime plus f triple prime and so on and so forth. And again, I'm going to present to you the solution development that looks extremely cool. So if we call the nth order derivative with respect to x as d to the n, then we have f here equal to d of f plus d squared of f plus d cube f and so on and so forth. So we define this as d plus d squared plus d cubed and so on and so forth of the function f. Again, we have a geometric series. So this is d over one minus d of f, terribly sorry about that, equal to f, which implies that one minus d of f equals d of f, which further implies that f minus d of f equals d of f, or we just have d of f equal to one half of f, that is df by dx equal to one half of f, which implies that f here should equal c times e to the x over two. And of course, we're gonna do a quick check for convergence. Oh, and yes, the straightforward approach, similar to the integral equation, does work over here as well. And it does indeed lead to c times e to the x over two. So we have f prime, terribly sorry about that, plus f double prime, and so on and so forth. This would equal c times e to the x over 2 times 1 half plus c times e to the x over 2 times a quarter. Terribly sorry about that. And so on and so forth. So we factor out c times e to the x over 2 and we have 1 half plus a quarter plus 1 eighth, etc, etc. Again, a geometric series that we know converges to 1 and yes, indeed, the solution, the right-hand side, that is, the infinite sum of derivatives, does indeed converge to the function f. But here's a question. What if the differential equation was not of infinite order? What if we just had f here equal to f prime plus f double prime plus all the way up to the nth order derivative of f? Well, this is a linear differential equation of order n, so we would have n linearly independent solutions. This implies that f here should equal to c1 times f sub 1 all the way up to cn times f sub n. So we have n number of linearly independent solutions here, but we only have one solution for the case of an infinite order differential equation. What is going on here? we need some further analysis. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. It turns out convergence has a big role to play here, obviously. So let's return to the case of the infinite order differential equation. We have f equal to f prime plus f double prime plus so on and so forth. And what if I were to take f prime onto the other side of the equation. So I have f minus f prime equal to f double prime plus f triple prime, terribly sorry about that, 
plus so on and so forth. This is of course equal to the derivative with respect to x of f prime plus f double prime plus so on and so forth. Oh, terribly sorry about that once again. And this, of course, is exactly what the function f is defined to be. So this thing equals d of f, which is f prime. And this implies that f minus 2f prime, or f here equals 2f prime, which implies that f prime is 1 half of f, which gives us exactly the same solution. We have c times e to the e, e to the x over 2. Okay, cool, but what if I were to do something different and I were to rewrite the equation as f minus f prime minus f double prime equal to f triple prime plus f to the fourth order, deri uh, the fourth order derivative of f and so on and so forth. Well, now I have d squared f prime plus f double prime, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. So what I have here is d squared of f, which is, of course, f double prime. So I have f minus f prime, again, terribly sorry about that, minus f double prime equal to f prime, which implies that 2 times f double prime plus f prime minus f equals 0, which can easily be solved using the characteristic equation. So we have 2 d squared plus d minus 1 being the, being the identity operator after all of f equal to 0. So we have 2 d squared plus d minus 1 equal to 0 as the characteristic equation which implies that d here equals 1 plus or minus, wait it's negative 1, yeah I tend to forget the quadratic formula. The better you get at doing hard math the worse you are doing easy math. So this thing equals 1 minus 4 times 2 times negative 1 divided by 2 times 2, which gives us negative 1 plus or minus 3 over 4. So we have negative 1 plus 3 over 4, negative 1 minus 3 over 4. So that means the solutions are, well, we have 1 half and we have negative 1. So f here should equal some constant c1 times e to the x over 2, which again, we've recovered, but we have another solution here, that's c2 times e to the negative x. But there's a problem here. If we were to plug in this function into our differential equation, then we see that for e to the x over 2, it converges. But for e to the negative x, we get a divergent series of alternating plus ones and minus ones. So in this case, the solution does not converge, which is pretty interesting. And I encourage you as an exercise to investigate this further for more manipulations of the equation the infinite order differential equation that I just presented, and if there's something similar at play for our infinite order integral equation. So those are a couple of exercises left to the viewer. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.